Welcome back to Mavericks All Access. Got Coach Kerry Banks up here, Danae Watson, and also Kennedy Grant. Guys, how are we doing today? Good. Good. <laughs> and of course, we're happy because we're off a win against Denver at home. Coach, starting with you, how great was it to see just the response out of this team? Uh, it was it was really, really positive. I feel like that game was a tale of two halves. Um, and I feel like we started off and we just lacked energy and fight. And I thought we showed that on Thursday. We didn't come up with a win, but I thought that we had those things. Um, so just at halftime, we talked about that and what it should look like in the second half. And they responded. And Kennedy, career day for you, 24 points. Had to feel pretty good. What went into the performance? Um, just going in. I mean, I missed two games um, with my team, and we've been looking for a win. Um, we do a good job of having each other's back in every game, whether I have a good game or not. I mean, they're always telling me, you know, just play your game. As people know, I'm a driver. So, I mean, yeah, I just tried to, you know, stay, stay, stay the course and do what I have to do for the team to win. Yeah, and Danae, this team was down 11 points in that third quarter. What did it take from this team to just step up that intensity? Um, I think we continue to have each other's back and just realize like this is a game that we can win and we just need to continue to fight and I felt like coming from halftime we just all came together and was like this is our game like we got to get it and we just had the motivation to go get it. So who's in the locker room giving the speech? Is it, is it Coach Banks? Who's, who's yelling? <laughs> or motivating? Maybe that's a better word. Um, before the coaches come in, I think we all say, <laughs> we all say something little to each other. And then once the coaches come in, they say their part and then, you know, we just keep it going. Yeah, she definitely let us have it at halftime. <laughs> we're not going to let that one I slide. didn't think we were going to share that with company, but apparently <laughs> she, she let us have it, but it worked. Limits, but <laughs> it well, worked. it worked. It yeah, worked. It did. I mean, we have a good balance too. We got mm. some people who are just sometimes too, too positive, And then we got other people who aren't as you know what I mean just it's okay guys and I think that works for us for mm -hmm. sure I think yeah. everybody kind of knows their role and um, knows who you can talk to a certain way and who you kind of have to you know be more encouraging to and we know we're learning each other um, as the days go by and it's starting to show very well in games so mm -hmm. and you have to have that balance too and I think you have a great mix of veterans and then people that are a little bit newer to this program but I would say you're more on the veteran heavy side this year yeah. does that feel a lot nicer having that experience and you're not kind of learning Coach Banks and the whole staff, day in and day out? Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I think it's good to have um, everyone, like, having the knowledge of basketball playing this year because, you know, having a new team, you know, sometimes you have to do more and more teaching. And I say with the team that we have now, we don't necessarily have to do too much on teaching things like in practice like usually everyone knows what what we're doing or what is a screen and what is a slip so it's like we don't have to continue to teach those those little moments practice goes a little bit faster is what we're saying pretty much yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> well coach you told us after that game on the radio call just about how this can snowball into more positive and more wins how do you feel like this win sets up the rest of conference play heading in that second half yeah I think it was just uh such a drought for us right and I think the the best thing that could happen to us was winning a game but that's also one of the hardest things to do is to win a basketball game um but just to feel the energy and the mood of the team after that game um it was just like the good old days I feel like um, with them and so I think they needed to experience that high and also experience um, winning a close game and what that felt like and going back and forth um, and being down and answering you know all of those things and because it gives you uh, kind of a guide when you get in those situations again so you don't panic uh, you've been there before and so I think obviously our league is really really tough but uh, just knowing that we can fight and win close games if we play the way um, that we're capable of playing I think that was really huge for our group. Yeah Kennedy I remember you saying preseason just about the potential of this group how much do you still see that right now? Nothing's changed um, I still have the utmost faith in us I mean we see it. We see it in the games. Every game, pretty much, that we've lost, um, we've been in the game. And we talk about it all the time, like, we're losing these games ourselves. It's not, for the most part, it's not anything that the other teams are doing. Um, it's little mishaps that we're having, and we're aware of those mishaps. And I think we're beating, we've been beating ourselves, for sure, in these losses that we've taken. So um, I'm not worried. I know that it's you know still in our control to just fix the things that need to be fixed, and we'll be fine. 
And one thing that I think remains constant is just how positive this team is and, and how much love I think you guys have for everyone in your group. Danae, if you want to speak to that relationship between just every single girl on this team. Um, yeah, I'm close with everybody on the team. Um, for me, stepping into Omaha and meeting the group of people that were here last year like they brought it in they had open arms and they made me feel like at home so like going into this year with like the new people that we have it was like giving them the same energy making them feel like they're home and not like oh I don't want to be here like we have to like come together and just make it like a sisterhood Mm -hmm. and for you earning a starting role too I know you sat out last year with the red shirt how much did that mean to you in finding that role on this team um it was it was a process, um, you know. Me sitting out last year that was my first time um, for an injury, so it was a bit difficult. But coming back this year, my mindset was, you know, try to give it my all, play safe, and continue to just be with the team and continue to grow and continue to make uh, different changes in the world too. Coach, how much growth have you seen between these two players? A lot, actually. Um, you know, Danae, I'll just start with her uh, since she just finished. Um, had that injury last year. Yeah. It was first time getting hurt. And she's somebody, too, that didn't even start her basketball playing career until I think it was ninth grade, maybe? Uh, it was 11th. 11th grade. And so you think about how far she's come and, and that little time to be a Division One athlete, right? And that's that's not a, a, a normal trajectory. So to see her go through that injury, which was a huge setback, and I think she had a lot of moments where she's like, you know, Danae's like 30 years old, so it's like, why am I still doing this? You know what I mean? Why am I still in college and putting my body through this? And I think she's just now at that point in the season where she's hitting her stride. Mm-hmm. Um, Kennedy, just from her freshman year, and she had uh, an injury as a freshman. So that normal time that freshmen get in the summer where they kind of learn the ropes and all that, she was sitting out. So even her her freshman year I think when she got back it was right before conference that was a big like growth time from her from her freshman to sophomore year and now for her to kind of step into this role that she is and really uh you know having to put up some big numbers for our team it's just um it's what you want in college Mm -hmm. for your athletes you want to see like hey the work pays off and uh it continues to get better if you stay committed to it how much importance does it bring to you guys of building something here at Omaha? You heard the men's team talk about it a little bit and just setting that foundation for years to come. How much privilege do you feel in that to bring something big to Omaha with the basketball programs? It's definitely a privilege to wear that across your, you know, your jersey. Um, We went to the championship last year and I think, you know, we can all agree that that's the goal this year. We're trying to get back there, but just win it this time. So, um, I think that would be amazing to make history and be the first, right, to go to the NCAA. The so, I mean, that's our goal. Like I say, I mean, we know how the season's been going, but we know that we have time. And March is when we need to be ourselves, our best selves. So that's what we're focused on. Today, how about for you? Um, I would agree with that. I think that, you know, um, I heard the boys say, it, like, you want to be playing your best basketball in March. And I think that's – 100% correct because again last year they made it to the championship and yeah we lost it but the same goal this year is to continue to get to the championship yeah we had our draw of losing games but you know a lot of people count us out which I that's my favorite thing is to count us out because you have teams going in playing us and they're like oh they're just going to sweep us and now we're at a point of our careers that we're like no we're not going to come in and let you guys sweep us it's it's go time now. Is that just kind of the chip on your shoulder you guys wear game in and game out? Yeah, for me it is because it's like, yeah, you know, we've had our drop, but it's like we're still going in saying, no, we can still win this game. Because even if we lose a game, we're still after the game saying, no, we we still got this. Like no one's in the locker room saying, oh, we can't do this anymore. Oh, our season's up. Because in reality it's not. We still have eight games plus the tournament. So, you know. All that matters is March, really, when it comes down to it. This is true. What's been special about this team during the Summit League tournament? I know we've talked about it a little bit before, but maybe, Kennedy, from your perspective, too, first. One more time. What's been special about this team in March, especially during that that Summit League play? Um, Just, like, we kind of touched on it a little bit, but we stay together. I think, especially where we are in our season right now, it can be so easy for a team to 
fall apart at this point in the season. You know, we haven't been playing our best basketball in conference. Um, and it can be easy to just kind of give up on it. And I'm seeing progress, you know, every game. And we know what we have to fix. And like I said, this team is coming together more and more and more. I mean, that Denver game was fun. Mm -hmm. And I think that just spoke volume. Like, we had fun. We were down at halftime by, what, 10? Mm -hmm. But we were having fun. And we knew at halftime we knew, like, this is our game. We are not losing this game. And we went out and we showed that. I think we just have to continue to go into every game with the right mindset and throw the first punch every time. Coming out of – like, to start the game and coming out of halftime, I think that's the most important thing. Coach, for you, what does that make you think of when, when you try to put this team in its best position come that Summit League tournament? Yeah, I think, um, you know, one thing I've said to them is, like, the work starts now. Like, we don't just show up on <laughs> day one of that tournament and boom, sure. it changes. Like, we've got to continue to see progress now. But I do think just going back to that time, um, I always feel like the group is the most connected um, that they have ever been. And I think that their focus and attention to detail, I mean, grows exponentially. And I think so for those – Three games, um, I have the most sharpest, committed, selfless, caring, you know what I mean, group of individuals, um, and it shows, you know, and they really, really, really play for each other in those moments, and so I just feel really fortunate that we have some kids on the roster this year that have experienced that um, and can kind of, you know, lead the younger ones along the way, and at, like, this is what it looks like for us this time of year. Well, the Mavs have the third best offense in the Summit League, so certainly something that's gone very well uh, for Omaha. To that offensive point, what's gone well, do you think, from that end this season? We, we thrive in transition. Um, when we are doing well in transition, when we're pushing the ball up the floor, that's when we are our best selves. Um, we're fast. We're one of the fastest teams in the league, in my opinion. And one-on-one, -on -one, nobody can really stick with us. So I think, you know, the more we're playing, the more we're scoring better – and, you know, sharing the ball a little bit better, it's harder for teams to guard us, I feel like. I mean, you got people who – Aaliyah, you got people like Poe who drop the ball, people have to collapse on us. And I think we've been doing a really good job shooting the ball. So I think if everybody can just stay the course and play their role, we're going to be – keep getting better game by game. I mean, Katie Keitch has had five three-pointers. Yes. How happy did that make you guys Should've for her? Shoot. Yeah, she, yeah, she did. Yes. Yeah. She's – uh. And she's really improved in her mm -hmm. shooting. So that's good to see just from her as well and her confidence. And that has been really good. Yeah. How about on the defensive end? What's the biggest challenge <laughs> to your team there? You Got to get coming. stops. You can score coming. as much as you want. <laughs> Got to get stops. Well, I have a list of things. It depends how long we have. But we'll start <laughs> with um, I think rebounding is a, is a really, really big one for us. And I think right now what is happening is I'm seeing we're – uh, we're getting deeper into the possession, right, where we're playing well, and then it's just finishing that possession with that last effort. But I just think our focus and attention to detail um, and, you know, being in the right spots is, is just really what it is. Um, staying locked into the scout and who does what and taking that away. And we've had some really, really um, – great moments of it, but then we've also had some slip-ups. But, you know, as Ken said earlier, I think all of those things are self-inflicted. So the thing that I'll celebrate is right now we're not talking about, hey, we can't make a shot, right? We can't mm -hmm. not box out. These are things we can do, and because we can do, we will fix them. So, yeah. What do you want to see most improved on the defensive end? Got it. You said where do I want to see? Sure, the anything. What do you want oh. to see most improved? <laughs> Um, on the defensive end, I would say I would agree with the rebounding. I mm -hmm. think once we get in our heads that we can get the rebound, like we can go get the rebound, all five of us or all four of us, I feel like once that's planted in our head, I feel like we're going to be unstoppable because it's – Plenty of times that, you know, offensive team, they shoot the ball and we slip up and miss the simplest rebound. So it's like I feel like once we get that, then I think that can improve a lot on our defensive end. I'm going to touch on that. I think scout has been a big thing for us. Mm -hmm. um, each game, again, I think we're getting better in a lot of – different areas, but I think we have to lock into the scout a little bit more. Um, a lot of those mishaps, like they said, rebounding, but letting shooters shoot, letting drivers drive. I think that's so important. Like, we have to just lock in a little bit more to that. And, again, self-inflicted. You make a shooter drive, something's probably going to work in our favor coming out of that possession. So, I think that's important moving forward as well is just being able to know personnel and know how to close out on specific people and stop them from doing what they're good at. Mm-hmm. 
Well, before we look ahead at that schedule, I want to also touch on the personal journeys of these two student athletes up here. KG out of Midwest City, Oklahoma. It's a pretty sweet name for a city, Midwest yeah. City. Yeah. Can you tell us about it and growing up there? Um, so I actually, um, my family's actually from a country town, Spencer, Oklahoma. Um, so I lived there for a few years, um, and then we moved to the ci- back to the city for school. And everybody kind of knows everybody there. I mean, I went to Midwest City High School. That's where I graduated from. Had a great basketball experience there. Um, a lot of those girls that I played with, we grew up playing together. So we kind of went into that. We all played in middle school together, AAU, and everything like that. So the chemistry was amazing. I mean, we made history in middle school, undefeated. I had a great time just playing basketball back home like it was fun that's where I kind of made a name for myself and yeah how'd you end up in Omaha they did a great <laughs> job <recruiting. laughs> they did a great great job um, I'm not gonna lie I was really set for a while on an HBCU mm-hmm. um, it was kind of like just going through our high school I was like HBCU it seems fun it was kind of more you know like my school my high school back home um, but then they called and they checked in probably more than any school that was recruiting me. Um, it felt like home. I felt comfortable, you know, to be on the phone with them and talk. I didn't feel like I was forcing a conversation or anything like that. Um, we got the same birthday. Oh, there you go. <laughs> we she has a lot of it. my yeah, she has I a lot of my it. characteristics. I see a lot mm-hmm. of myself in her, and I'm pretty sure she sees a lot of me. And even she's that's why know, sometimes we can be like this, yeah. and then sometimes it's like you know what I, I know why done you the did same that. Thing. <laughs> So I'm going to just mind my business. Yep, for sure. And it's so crazy because, like, we'll be in the locker room or something, and, you know, like, she might say something or come in high, and I'll just sit back and ask them. We talk all the time. Like, I'm not going to lie. If I was Coach Banks, I would have did the same thing. I say it all the time. So, um, but, yeah, I see a lot of, you know, myself and her, and we just got along really well. So that's what brought me here. Danae, how about you from Bradenton, Florida? Ended up in Nebraska. How'd that happen for you? Yeah, so my college journey has been long. Mm-hmm. So um, I had gotten to the transfer portal, and I remember getting a phone call out of the blue from one of my old coaches, and he's good friends with Coach Banks, and he was telling me, hey, how would you feel about going to Nebraska? And I was already in Missouri, so I was like, um, why not? Maybe that's where I'm supposed to be at. So I remember like a few hours later, Coach Banks gave me a call, and I'm – I was doing my hair because I was getting ready to go out. <laughs> and I was like, I was like telling my roommate, I was like, oh, it's not going to be long. Like, you know, just whatever. And I stayed on the phone with Coach Banks for an hour. And like when I was on the phone with Coach Banks, she didn't really talk much about basketball, which is what I liked. Like she tried to get to know me and not try to force like too much of basketball on me. And I just remember her saying like, you know, they had a candy shop in Omaha. And that is sold, honestly. Like I that sold you? I honestly was like a big candy shop. I love candy. Like I need to come. And I think like a week or two later, I had came out to Omaha for my visit and yeah. So Coach Banks uses candy to get recruits. I don't know if that's a good headline. Yeah, well, it, what is it? Hollywood. We we take them Hollywood down candy, there and yep. it's it's pretty impressive. I did not remember that I said that though. <laughs> yeah. But she I looked it candy. up. Yeah. And I was like, wow, little did you know. It's yeah. big. That's okay. <laughs> 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 Dial into that stuff. What do you yes. remember about their recruiting journeys? With Kimmy, it was the same thing. I could sit on the phone and talk to her. There are some recruits that you call and you're like, okay, let me Google some questions because they are just so dry. They have one word answers. And you start to wonder if you can even coach the kid because of their lack of personality. You know what I mean? So I felt like that was something very uh, comforting with her. It's like, Mm -hmm. okay, if I can have a dialogue with this person, I can coach them. With Danae, same thing, just a very bubbly personality. Like you could almost see like just through the phone you could hear her personality you know what I mean and so um, knowing that a coaching buddy of mine had coached her and said so many positive things too I think that was kind of um, a step in the right direction just knowing the character piece was going to be in place so um, yeah no it was I enjoyed recruiting them you know Mm -hmm. so that was that was a really great thing about that. How much has recruiting changed for you just in general right now and just this era we're in? Um, geez, it's, I mean, with the portal, it changes everything because high school kids, 
uh, they kind of have to make their decisions a little quicker because that scholarship's just not going to sit there and wait, especially as we approach the portal entry. Um, now with transfers being able to, like, they don't have to sit after their second transfer, you kind of are thinking about, you know what I mean? Okay, what does this mean for my team as mm -hmm. far as, uh, you know, the players on my roster and what does it mean on other teams and do I want to entertain, you know, that? And um, so it's just a lot more things um, that you have to look at. And I think the biggest thing is just doing your research. Um, I think that's one thing I would say that I have really, really taken more seriously is that circle of people and influence, knowing them um, and knowing people who have been around them that maybe they don't even know that we're calling to see, okay, what is this person like in this situation? Because uh, I want to know, like, hey, we, you know, in the middle of the season, if we're not winning games, how are they going to act? How are they going to respond? So I think just that due diligence is really picked up for me. Another really cool thing we've seen this year is just the growth of women's basketball yeah. across the nation. I mean, you think of players like Caitlin Clark, Paige Becker has come to mind that have just really um, extended this game in the national scale. You're seeing Summit League games on CBS between men's and women's. You're also seeing more games on ESPN. How cool is that just to see the growth of the game you guys love so much? Kennedy, starting with you. Uh, it's been cool. I mean, I I rock with my girls. I'm always, you know, girl power. So I think it's just amazing to see the growth um, that women's basketball has been getting and the attention that it's been getting. Um, and I'm just like, let's keep the ball rolling. I mean, mm -hmm. it's going, like you said, Kaylin Clark, I mean, come on. So I, I love it. Um, I'm happy that we're getting the attention that has been deserved for a very long time. And I just hope that it continues to get better. Um, I would agree with Ken. Um, I think it's a good step in the right direction because it's like, you know, years ago we weren't hearing or seeing much about women's sports. And to see the growth of just women's basketball in general now and seeing the coverage that they get, I think it's a really good um, step in the direction because I know, like, a few years ago, like, you know, our games weren't on TV. So my parents had to pay for, like, a little app just to watch our games on, like, to get it on the TV. So it's like some schools couldn't have that access. So now it's seeing like the women's college basketball grow it's like that's nice to see like all these games are on different platforms coach banks yeah. from your perspective too just being around this game so long yeah i think we will see the true impact of it uh maybe 10 years from now i know for me growing up i saw women on tv if it was the olympics uh that random yukon tennessee rivalry you know what i mean but not as much today so just for all the young girls out there who are now seeing this and not having to hunt or you know what mm -hmm. i mean for these games and seeing the following you know like the autograph lines and you know just the um, ways they're able to mark it, um, these young women, I think it gives them something really to aspire to. So I think it's going to continue to grow the game and um, I think just pull young girls into a positive direction with sports. So, yeah. Super exciting. Well, let's look at that upcoming schedule for the second half of conference mm -hmm. play. First at St. Thomas, a team that's again in the middle of the pack of that Summit yeah. League and then you play North Dakota, NDSU, NDSU being that second place team at home. What's the most important thing moving forward for this team? Besides defense, you can't say defense. Can't say defense. Well, I'll, uh, Kennedy brought up a, a great point. I think just our game plan discipline mm -hmm. um, and, and staying true to what it is we're trying to accomplish. I think we've, you know, I think we provide a really good kind of <laughs> scout. <laughs> and I think if we stick to that, uh, we'll be in great shape. How about for both of you? Agreed. Um, I think that's our biggest thing, honestly. I mean, a lot of this rebounding and stuff, yeah, but it all kind of ties back to the game plan discipline. Rebounding is game plan. Mm -hmm. Like, that's the game plan is to box out. So, if we stick to what we are supposed to stick to, we're going to come back home to Omaha with a win. I agree with them. Um, I feel like if we continue to just go into every game and have that mentality of fight and it's not over with, I think we'll be fine. Certainly showed that against Denver. So, uh, plenty more to come for the Mavericks. How about we play some trivia, though? Are you guys ready? Let's do, it. Let's do it. Whiteboards are under your seat. So these okay. are different questions, of course. And oh, I was apparently yeah. You guys were googling <laughs> Nebraska trivia. I don't I don't know if mine will be on that list or whatever you googled. I made these up myself. Doesn't matter. I'm gonna win regardless. <laughs> oh, she has <actually laughs> the confidence <laughs> over here. <laughs> All right. First question: Which is not a name of a town in Nebraska? I made one of these up. Okay. Friend, Valentine, love. Which is not. That's crazy. In Nebraska. Two of those are, actually. No, yep. <laughs> Can you repeat the name? Friend, Valentine, love. 
friend. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, you ready? Flip them. Hope so. Coach Banks even had time to draw something on hers, too. <laughs> so the answer is love. Love Aww. is fake. Coach uh, Banks. I believe that's so. one zero. Okay, we'll oh take God. that. Put your tally down. She's oh. so One zero. Okay. She's you get score. tougher. <laughs> oh, okay. My bad. Yeah, you're getting a little ahead of yourself. Okay. <laughs> Which famous baseball athlete is from Omaha? George Brett, Bob Gibson, Chipper Jones. I know nothing about baseball. <laughs> I think I'm going to just guess. Ugh. George Brett, Bob Gibson, Chipper Jones. That's wrong. That's wrong. It's probably safe. Switch it. Switch yeah. it. Give us one second. Oh. Okay. All right, flip them. Everyone's wrong. Oh, I should have it it's it? Bob Gibson. There's a I statue of him changed it. in Omaha. I had B at right Warner now. Park. Okay. Legend. Well, I don't know that's where okay. Warner Park is. So that's, well, that would be an issue. Heard of it. <laughs> that's the start of that. Mountain Papillion. Right over <laughs> okay. here, actually. Very close. All righty. All right, next one. I think you guys might know this one. I've, I've been tossing this idea around, so you guys would have even had time to Google answers. it. Which NBA franchise used to play in Omaha and Kansas City? Is it... The Grizzlies, the Pacers, or the Kings? Oh. Well, so it gotta be close to the brand. It gotta be close. One more time. The Grizzlies, the Pacers, or the Kings? Sacramento. I think it's me. <laughs> I like Brand. how we can Sacramento hear the whisper too. C. No, I know, that's what I'm saying, Sacramento's like, I think it's A, but hopefully she oh, right. No. All right, turn them. It's Kings. I should have just. Bloop. <laughs> bloop, bloop, bloop. Are you familiar with the one Kansas City Omaha Kings? I know one of the players that played on the team. You remember we went to the Lakers game? Oh, yep. He played, so I just figured it was California. Should have gave us a little. Uh, this is where opposite teams right now. <laughs> All right, here's a one I actually didn't know this morning that Look, I just found yeah. out. Which fast food item was created at the University of Nebraska? Oh. McDonald's McRib. Arby's roast beef sandwich or the Sonic chili cheese dog? Mm. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say too. I think y'all should help us out. I think. <laughs> <laughs> Does anyone in here actually know it? I didn't know this too, but my coworkers are like, everyone knows this. So I'm glad that no one does. All right, flip them. Oh, I know, I'm wrong. It's the McRib. Oh, I yeah. knew it because I'm like beef. No I don't know then, if that's a good thing really? or not. Yeah. We're doing terrible. <laughs> Have you guys ever had a McRib? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Have you really? Mm -hmm. Okay. You 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 don't like you don't uh, eat McDonald's. I, I, I I'll eat a hash brown and the McRib. Okay. Here. So it's Me either. One more. We got one more. Oh man. And then the tiebreaker. This one I really hope you guys get. How many teams compete in the College World Series in Omaha? Oh, oh gracious. Okay. Should I even give you guys options? Yes. <laughs> Four? I think we should know this. Eight or ten? Right? I think so. Come on. Okay. Yeah, because it, yeah, it got to yeah. be. All right, turn it on. Oh, if I'm wrong. Okay, good. <laughs> Yay. Thank God. Okay. Okay. What's the score right now? Oh, it's, it's... It's three one. so I mean, I could keep playing if you want. All right, let's do the tiebreaker. Okay. Yeah. What about this is all or nothing? Yep. It's either... No, 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 that's... Yeah, 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 I yeah. Like that let's idea. Do, let's do all or nothing. Let's <laughs> okay. put all your points up. Okay. <laughs> this one's even better. You guys barely knew that one. Who won last year's College World Series? Oh, oh my <laughs> goodness gracious. <laughs> do we? Yes. Texas? Yeah. Men's or... Men's? It's men. It's, it's only... College World well, the softball is no, called the World Soft Series, too, Okay, but it's not men's called World oh, Series in yeah. Omaha. This is not Oklahoma, the girls. Oh, that's a good point. I uh, forget. Texas, LSU, or North Carolina? Who won? Well, it wasn't North Carolina. The, oh, wait. The men's called World Series in oh, Omaha, Nebraska. My gosh. Yeah, she don't know. Time's up. I already won, so I'm just no, doing this, this for fun. Nothing. Wait a minute. She's Let me just. She's panicking, y'all. <laughs> Coach Banks is coming. Whoa. I, my answer's done. I put my pen down. <laughs> <laughs> Are we ready? I think. It's okay. You say, you say. 
All right, flip them. Oh, no. I didn't get it right. She flipped. I did. Flip them. It's LSU. Yeah, you both are right. Oh, Oh. So Coach Banks wins. She 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 just doubled her points. Mm -mm. I don't remember. We're not baseball fans up here is what we found out. No. Coach Banks won. Coach Banks won. Oh, God. That was good. That was fun, guys. She's going to take that and run with it. Run with it. it. You let guys go. are great. We should have put something on the line, like a tattoo or something. We should have put a 16 and 60 on the line. Oh. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> they would have not like that, though. <laughs> Thankfully, we don't have one from last game, so that's yeah. There we go. All right, positive. well, thank you guys so much, thank and best of luck us. in this second half of the yeah. season. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank go you. Mavs. Yes. <laughs>